Welcome to the Backyard Boatyard Series. This is Morning Mist, the Catalina 22, 1980. I picked up on Craigslist last year for $4,500. Now, if you've been watching the Oroville Dam Series, you've seen this boat sitting in the backyard all winter long, and it's been a long, hard winter on this boat, and I've spent the last two days clean, cleaning it up, as we never seem to clean our house until guests arrive. And so, as you ostensibly are the guests, <laughs> welcome aboard. So I not only want to take this opportunity to introduce you to the boat, I want to make this video um, for folks that might be interested in sailing, folks that might be interested in more information on a Catalina 22 specifically. We'll probably break this down into two or three parts. Uh, we'll start with the interior today and then we'll talk about the exterior and all the points, all the technical points about a sailboat that are found on the Catalina 22. And then uh, the third part will get you out on the water. But right now, let's hop up in the drone and show you the top sides of the Catalina 22 and talk a little bit about the history of the Catalina Boat Series. My name's Juan Brown and you're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel. According to Sailing Magazine, the Catalina 22 is a compromise in most respects, which shows in its practical appearance. There's no dramatic shear, no graceful overhangs, no sleek deck layout. And that's exactly what designer Frank Butler intended. It's a simple boat providing the basic essentials for first time sailors or budget strapped families looking to day sail, weekend cruise, or maybe join a racing fleet. Sailing Magazine. In 1969, designer Frank Butler had a dream to build the first Catalina 22. This petite, family-friendly cruising sloop was his fledgling company's inaugural boat. If things went well, he hoped to build a hundred of them. By 1975, Butler had 5,000 Catalina 22 hulls in the water. By 1980, when this vessel was built, the Catalina 22s had reached 10,000 hulls produced. The Catalina series was originally produced in Southern California and North Hollywood, but soon Butler had plants on the West Coast, East Coast, Australia, England, and Canada. The specifications on the Catalina 22, the overall length is 21 feet 6 inches, rounded up to 22, thus Catalina 22, with a beam, the width of the hull, 7 feet 8 inches. The length of the water line is 19 feet 4 inches and the draft, that is how deep you can go before hitting bottom, with the swing keel up you can go as in as shallow as 2 feet of water with the swing keel down 5 feet. The swing keel itself, cast iron, weighs 550 pounds and the displacement of the entire vessel 2,250 pounds. The mass to the water line, how, how tall of a bridge you got to deal with 29.1 feet headroom with the pop top up is five feet seven inches but with the pop top down it's only four feet four inches the catalina 22 is an extremely popular trailer sailor what's a trailer sailor well it's a sailboat that you can fit on a trailer what are the advantages of a trailer sailor well <laughs> for one thing you know uh, owning an aircraft an aircraft only has to perform the miracle of flight every once in a while while you take it up in the air a boat once it's in the water is constantly trying to sink to the bottom of the lake every minute that it's on the water a trailer sailor helps eliminate a lot of that fuss and worry you're saving money keeping the the boat out of the water you're saving maintenance you're able to in some cases park it in your backyard just like this honey when are you gonna move that boat of course the great advantage of the trailer sailor is you can hook it up to the back of the truck and get quickly to the good sailing grounds right away. The disadvantage, of course, is it's got to be a smaller and lighter sailboat, but the Catalina 22 comfortably sit, fits a family of four. And we'll show you some of the different configurations for that, especially if they're younger kids. But first, a word about sailing itself. Sailing is not for everybody. That's how I ended up with this boat. The folks that bought it thought they'd try it out and decided, nah, it's not for me. Why is sailing not for everybody? It, takes a lot of time it, it takes a little bit of learning to learn it um, you take this trailer sailor to the lake it's gonna take you 30 to 45 minutes to set it up before you even get to splash it into the water and about the same amount of time to take it down but there's really nothing more rewarding than sailing a, a, a 
of the ability to go under your own power of the wind as opposed to just firing up the engine and going boating. But if you're into flying or aviation or engineering or you're a bit of a gearhead and you like gadgets and that sort of thing, a sailboat is just full of individually designed one function items that, that'll just keep you occupied <laughs> forever. And if you've ever heard the expression, learn to swear like a sailor, you will after learning the hard way, some of the ins and outs of sailing. There is more head banging, finger squishing opportunities on one of these vessels than any other hobby out there. So let's go on board the morning mist and check out the interior. Here's my dock. I used the uh, kids tree for it. They're still wondering where it is to get on board the boat. Try to keep the boat clean. Just spent two days cleaning, washing it, cleaning it, scrubbing it. Typical hatch design. Welcome to the interior of the Morning Mist, 22 foot Catalina. The, uh, at 4,500 bucks, the quality and condition of these cushions, those sails and that five horsepower Nissan Marine outboard engine was well worth the price of admission. Those are some of the features you wanna look for in a used Catalina. It probably looks pretty small in here, and it is. The kids fit just fine up here in the V-berth. This uh, dinette converts into a bed, and I'll show you the king-size bed where I turn this entire salon into one giant king-size bed uh, with the help of a couple of coolers and the available cushions that are here in the boat. But there's a neat feature of the Catalina 22 that adds a lot of space and standing room, the pop top. Now this pop top design is very heavy, so be careful. Make sure everything's clear on top. You got these two la <clears throat> latches right here. Up she goes, boom, up against the mast like that. And then, we've got this clip here, I don't know if you can see it, I'll show you. It catches the pop top and secures it into place right there. Now you got a pretty safe design. It's not designed to go underway with this pop top open. It's more designed for once you're anchored. Headspace. Now, on most of the Catalinas, you can find a nice screen design uh, that'll screen in this porch for you and keep the bugs out. You can also get a screen for your companion way as well. Remember, I'm a professional pilot, not a professional sailor, so I'm gonna be a little loose with the terminology here in, on, on sailing. And uh, there's, <laughs> there's no bigger group of nerds on the internet than sailboat nerds, and I'm sure they'll come by the hundreds to correct me in the comment section for my use of terminology, but I'll try to get it right for you. Up here in the V-berth is where two kids sleep easy. I've slept up here. It's a little bit uh, coffin-like in there, but you got this nice big hatch right here. And then way up in the bow is this neat little hatch, and that gets you right to the stay for your forestay. That's where your forestay attaches to the bow of the boat. Check that for security. These simple little wood hatch designs by Catalina, just like that. Here's some more hardware attach points. Want to periodically check those, all those for security. The hatch is just held up by this spring. It's another finger poke and smash it operation. When you're underway, be sure and secure the hatches. Batten down the hatches. Underneath the V-berth is huge amounts of storage. And there's lots of great storage throughout the boat like this. This part of the V-berth opens up into a true V type configuration. And here I've got a porta potty, a sail cover. Porta potty, I just use that for number one. You keep that clean at all times, you won't have any trouble with smell. 
here's the chain plates for the side stays into this plywood bulkhead. I'm gonna make sure that's all secure. And here's some more hardware to check. This decorative looking piece is a very important part of the structure. It's the compression post. It's what takes the compression of the mast down to the keel of the boat. There you can see the mast right on top of the compression post. The mast is under compression from the rigging. The convertible dinette, which turns into a small sleeping space right here. Shelves running alongside for additional storage. Underneath the benches of the dinette, more storage right to the bilge. These cushions just snap into place. A long and deep quarter berth underneath the starboard side of the cockpit but not a lot of head or shoulder space back in there. Great for storage. Under this bench seat on the starboard is additional storage. And there was once a uh, option for a sink right there. Electrical panel located right here and additional storage underneath this bench seat of the dinette and access to the port side underneath the cockpit. There's access under the cockpit. There's also a hatch out in the cockpit to get in there. Anchors and stuff go back in there. Out here in the cockpit, you got access to the quarter berth here and access to the bilge down there where you can store all your heavy stuff like anchors and that sort of thing, buoys. Here's the mount for the magma grill. And access to the miserable wiring system. Okay, boat people, how come you can never do wiring right? Every single boat I've ever messed with, the wiring is absolutely atrocious. Atrocious. It's very rare to find a vessel with a decent wiring system, and this is no exception. This one is so bad off. I've just discontinued using the electrical system altogether. Took the battery out. You can use portable lights, just like 10 camping. You don't even need the electrical system. Get a load of this. Diving down underneath the dinette bench seat here. This is where the battery box goes and here's the back side to the switch panel. And look at this rat nest wiring just spliced and diced and taped and who knows what kind of crappy connections. Uh, it's just a friggin' disaster. So there's a project for you. Some freaking non-marine Romex. Good lord. Forget it. I'm not using it for this season. Don't need it. For anchor lights, you can use those Lucy lights. They come into red and or white and will stay lit all night long. The Catalina 22 design came in several different keel configurations. The fixed keel, the fin keel, and I think the most popular, the swing keel. The swing keel makes a very popular trailer sail because it allows you to retract the keel and get the sailboat on a reasonable sized trailer without having to have that big giant fixed keel hanging down below it. <clears throat> it also allows you to, a lot of things, it allows you to um, get the boat in and out of the water much easier. You don't need such a long tongue on your trailer. And it allows you to retract the keel anytime you're underway and get into the most shallowest waters that no sailboat could otherwise get into. You could even beach these things on the beach with the keel retracted. And here's the handle and the mechanism for that. It's just a very simple trailer winch. So here behind this thin veneer of plywood, you can see the, the winch. Simple trailer winch. Definitely want to check the condition of that when you're looking at these old sailboats and the condition of that cable. Looking below the companion way, you'll find the two through hull fittings on the Catalina 22. This takes care of the cable for the swing keel and this is the drain to the cockpit. Two drains into one and drops down right at the trailing edge of the swinging keel. One note of caution on the swing keel is you got to constantly remind yourself, is the keel down? <laughs> you, you know, once you're anchored somewhere near shore or something like that, or you're just coming off the trailer, did you put the keel down? It sails pretty good with the keel up, but if you get in a decent size wind, you're going to find yourself tipping a lot more than you, <laughs> than you should be if the keel is retracted. 
Now here's another somewhat mysterious and controversial component to the Catalina 22, the keel lock, located underneath this bench seat on the dinette. Way up underneath here, this is the keel lock. You screw it in to lock it, unscrew it to unlock it. But we don't use it much. What's the idea of a keel lock? That's to lock the keel down into place. Um, as a security measure, if you're out in really rough seas, probably seas that you shouldn't be out in to begin with, um, that'll keep the keel from inadvertently retracting. Remember, there's nothing keeping that keel down other than the weight itself, and it's a very heavy keel. But if you lay that boat over hard enough and get shoved by a big enough wave, you could potentially retract there that wave could potentially retract that keel back into the hull of the boat just at the worst time when you really don't want it to happen i'm not taking this boat out in those kind of conditions this is not what's considered a blue water sailor sailor i'm not going out underneath the golden gate bridge you can but i'm not this is primarily a lake boat and as such most of us never mess with that keel lock. We just leave, let the gravity do its work there. Half the time you're gonna forget that keel lock and start to retract the keel and end up busting the cable or fighting it and trying to get it up or make it a big scrape mark. And you'll see it on the bottom of the keel where folks have forgotten and <laughs> scrape the keel on up. Is it what, raining or something? No, I've been scrubbing. Where you been, Pete? You went to school today? I need some help scrubbing the boat. Show them how well you fit up there in that V berth. Climb on up into here. You want to go out on the boat today, Pete? Do you want to go fishing? Yeah, you got lots of room in there. Look at you go. <laughs> you like that? Is it cozy up there? Yeah. Okay, now let's do the king size salon mod in the Catalina 22. First, you'll need a couple of these inexpensive blue coolers from the Big Five. They are just the right dimensions. I'm not sure the liter size of these, but they're the standard old blue coolers from Big Five. Okay, now let's do the king size salon mod in the Catalina 22. First, you're going to need to get a couple of these blue Coleman coolers from Big Five. They're the just right dimensions. Next, you're going to want to lower the dinette. With the dinette lowered, drop this extra cushion in here. Drop your two Coleman coolers in place, just like that. And they're just the right width and height for this mod. Right flush here. Grab the back cushions from your dinette here and here, remember they just snap with these snaps right into place. And now you have the ultimate king size salon in your Catalina 22. And if you've never slept on a boat before overnight in the water, you're missing the ultimate waterbed experience. And there's plenty of room for two in this configuration. Now you can refine this further. You could even build a proper wooden structure in place of the uh, coolers, but you got the coolers on board anyways. You might as well use them. Now this keel support ends right here. So you got basically from this point all the way back to the winch handle to work with. You can also refine this with the, the abundance of pillows and blankets that you have on board and stuff them in any holes or voids and make a very cozy nest, lots of room king size bod in the Catalina 22. If I, had I think that's all the components of the interior of a Catalina 22. In the next video, we'll review the exterior of the Catalina 22 and all the points of sale and all the different mechanical attachments and what they do. See you here. I'll work on that terminology too. I show up and I'll stay single Couldn't bring myself to marry an old bell It would just be me triggered Go riding through the movies Made by a boat and on the sea